Welcome to the fourth section, Machine Learning with Spark MLlib. In this section, we will start our deep dive into Apache Spark's machine learning library. I will do this by first familiarizing you with Spark MLlib, how it's set out, how it works, and how it looks like internally. And then, to the use case of building a recommendation system, we will actually get hands on with Spark MLlib. I will teach you about its many features. I will show you how we can set up models, how to tune the models, and how to apply parameter tuning to them. We'll also finally start using the data that we have been cleaning in the last few sections and we're uh, working with in order to actually make recommendations for users that are present in that data set. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the video Machine Learning with Spark. In this video, we will be exploring Spark's machine learning library in greater detail than before. I'll be zooming in on Spark's machine learning library. We'll be exploring how to use the MLA properly in code, and we'll be exploring Spark's machine learning library and its documentation. Let's briefly recap what I mentioned about Spark machine learning library earlier. I mentioned that MLlib is Apache Spark's scalable machine learning library. I had summarized that Spark, besides being well optimized for big data, is also optimized for machine learning and data science at scale. I will illustrate this in one of our next videos by showing how Spark's algorithms take an efficient and optimized approach in calculating recommendations in a recommender system. More about this later in this section. For now, let's take another look at this picture from an earlier video that breaks down what MLlib looks like. It highlights Spark MLlib's highly scalable implementation, native interoperability with other Spark components, the integration with existing data science tools, the interoperability with NumPy, the extensive set of high quality algorithms, a rich set of tools that it brings, and the extensive documentation. MLlib leverages the other high level libraries packaged with the Spark framework, such as Spark Core, Spark SQL, and Spark Streaming, with the goal to make practical machine learning scalable and easy with a high level of algorithmic performance. Spark MLlib is designed mainly for large-scale learning settings, which benefit from model parallelism. Because of this, the approach that an aspiring machine learning engineer needs to take to implement Spark in their workflow can be quite a bit different from a more conventional data science approach. Let's focus on the picture on the left. I drew five circles, each representing a part of the rich set of tools Spark MLA provides for constructing, evaluating, and tuning machine learning pipelines and modules. At a high level, it provides tools and features such as the machine learning algorithms. Some of those are the common learning algorithm, just classification, regression, clustering, and collaborative filtering. We'll be using collaborative filtering further in this section. Then we have featureization in the next bubble. This comes with feature extraction, transformation, dimensionality reduction, and selection. Then there are machine learning pipelines, these are tools for constructing, evaluating, and tuning machine learning pipelines. We'll be covering those in the next section. Then there's persistence. This means saving and loading of algorithms, models, and pipelines. This is also something we'll cover in a later video. And then there are the utilities, linear algebra, statistics, data handling, and things like this. In the next few sections of this course, I will cover these topics in greater detail. So this is in a nutshell what Spark's machine learning library looks like internally. But there is an important thing I have to add here concerning Spark's machine learning library, or should I say libraries. There are actually are two machine learning packages in Apache Spark. Let me zoom in on this. So let me briefly compare these two packages. On the left side, I've drawn ML, which stands for spark.ml. And on the right side is MLlib, which stands for spark.mllib. Spark MLlib contains the legacy API built on top of RDDs and has entered maintenance mode with the release of Spark 2.0. This means that there are no more features being developed for it. The spark.ml library, which I drew on the left, um, contains a newer higher level API built on top of data frames for constructing machine learning pipelines, hence coming with a lot more optimizations for performance and implementation. It natively connects in with the Spark SQL module that we covered in the last section. The data frame based spark.ml library is now the primary API for Spark. The RDD based API of MLlib is expected to be removed in the upcoming Spark 3.0 release sometime when it comes out. It is important to understand the difference between the, these two packages. The addition of the data frame based API is quite a recent one, as a matter of fact. ML and MLlib have only recently reached feature parity with the release of Spark 2.3. As a result, when looking online for tutorials, examples, or documentation, you will often find that the examples given are with the older RDD based API and not with the newer data frame based API. So it's important to be aware of this so that you don't run into problems of getting your code to work. Okay, 
So you might be wondering why I have been referring to Spark's machine learning library as Spark MLlib this whole time, and now I'm saying that it is called Spark ML. The reason is that Spark ML is not an official name. Spark MLlib is still the official name for both the RDD-based API as well as the DataFrame-based API. The reason why the DataFrame-based API of Spark is referred to as ML is due to the package names in Scala and Python. We originally import them as by Spark.ml or, if you use Scala, Spark.ml. Additionally, the Spark ML pipelines term was used initially to emphasize the pipeline concept, but it first was being developed some years back. So note the difference in names in the example import statements that I've sent here, by Spark.ml versus by Spark.mllib. And this is how you can recognize how to properly use the data frame based API that we will be covering in code. So if you ever see any code snippets that are importing MLlib, try to make sure that you understand that this is not the same APIs that we were covering here. So in short, Spark's data frame based machine learning API is really called Spark MLlib, but often referred to as Spark ML, as I just did in the previous slides. I've highlighted this because I feel it is important for you to know the difference at a code level. Knowing the difference is important so that you don't run into issues when looking for examples online. Lots of these will still refer to the MLlib package, which is now in maintenance mode. We will be using this PySpark.ml package and not the PySpark.mllib package throughout the rest of the course. I have mentioned before that Spark has an extensive set of documentation. Let's take an opportunity to explore this a bit further and let me show you. So first, I'm going to show you Spark's machine learning library guide. So this is a website that piece of documentation that Spark provides, which is all about the machine learning library or the machine learning packages. So in the bottom here, you see on the left, you can see that there's an RDD based API guide. So I'm not going to be covering this one. What we're going to be covering is the MLlib guide at the top. So here you can see the, what I just mentioned that both the official package names are actually MLlib, but the way you import them is obviously different. So here again, you see the same, what I just mentioned about ML algorithms, featureization, pipelines, persistence, and utilities. And as you can see, there are a bunch of topics on the left here, which when you click on it, will actually explain in a lot more detail what's going on. So here's the announcement that I was mentioning about the RDD based API being in maintenance mode. There's some dependencies mentioned, which is something that we will cover much later in the course, because this is really not important for now. And also when there's new features, you can see down here what is being added. So you see in 2.3, they did a major release basically for the MLlib package. And here you see what they have added. There's a migration guide. So if you want to go from previous version to a newer version, etc., etc. So this is a really nice one to take the time and explore. In the next videos, I will be covering some of the topics down here. Specifically, we'll be going into collaborative filtering, but that's not important for now. The second part of documentation that I wanted to show is the actual package that we're recovering. So this is the PySpark package website. And here you see the sub packages that exist within PySpark. So you have SQL, Streaming, MLlib. So here again, the difference between ML and MLlib. And this is the one that I wanted to show. So this PySpark ML package, when we click on that, this brings us to the documentation about everything that has to deal with the PySpark ML. And on the left here, you see all the different sub packages of this package again. It goes on for quite a while. If you look at the left here, you can see it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. So there's a lot to it and there's a lot of information to parse. For now, I just wanted to point out that this is what I mean with extensive documentation. Basically everything that Spark does here, all the APIs and all the interfaces that you have to deal with are quite well explained. Again, I'll be covering more in detail the things that matter for what we're going to be covering in the next videos. For now, this is just to share how things work. So now we had the chance to check out a little bit of what I call extensive documentation for Spark. Here are the links to what I just showed. So on the top here, you have the machine learning library guide that I showed it first. And then the second one is the link to the PySpark ML package API documentation. So let's recap what we've learned so far. PySpark machine learning library actually consists of two libraries or packages, ML and MLlib. Both are actually part of the MLlib component, which might be confusing, but we just need to know the difference between how we import it. So there's PySpark ML and not PySpark MLlib. ML is just an alias for the data frame based MLlib API. And the MLlib's RDD based API will be removed in future releases. And this is important to understand. Furthermore, we got to cover some of the extensive documentation and we rehashed a little bit about what the machine learning library is.